Empress Vita Part 1. Um, this is for Jessica Lee. <clears throat> and it opens up with a quote by uh, Joseph Campbell. Life lives by killing and eating itself. Casting off death and being reborn. Your eyes do more than just disarm me. They make me crumble to my knees. Standing erect before me, you are all that exists on this scorched field of perpetual warfare. And I'm a child locked alone in a closet without you. I'm cowering under the covers. My vision blurred with tears as the ghost of my punisher treads down the hall towards my bedroom one step at a time. I'm yours, Vita, shuddering at your feet with a terror inconsolable. Save me from these daily bouts of castigation, the rituals of which were designed to inflict the most damage to the frailest aspects of my identity. Its wobbling foundation brought to a smoldering collapse after my innocent appeals for salvation are silenced, then denounced as the depraved proclamations of a madman. Keep this bitterness at bay with snaps from your divine whip, deterring the heads of our only household from smothering me in my crib. Command it of me and I'll forsake this wretched world for you. Permit me to retire at the foot of your pedestal, its hard, monolithic base of onyx. A cold compress against my fevered brain. Show me the girl who still plays undaunted in the haven of your sternum, sheltered by the curvature of breasts so perfect they glow with a sublime aura. Your heart is the only kingdom still standing, thriving in this bleeding sky high above this disintegrating purgatory. Oblivious, you float over cities left to waste like a television switched off and uh, left in the corner of the room the glow of your emblematic skin is powerful enough to powerful enough to render me unconscious amidst this never mending never ending rendering turmoil the emblematic skin <sighs> glows like nothing I've ever seen the go is beneath the towering shade of your glory it's the only place left in total subordination to your downward glance I crawl across the battlefield to kiss your bejeweled toes one by one my thighs and ankles have been sliced to shreds by razor wire, my face eaten by plagues that have ravaged populations for centuries. Insects the size of car engines are caught in my clutches and crushed. Their exoskeletons crack between my, between my jaws and chip my teeth. You are on the other side of the world as I grapple with one new rash of pestilence after another in the mud. But in my mind, you are always only inches away from where I arrived. Acting as a bridge between taut and steady arms, your clavicles are the boughs of an ancient elm dusted with silver. Its cleansing is crashing thunder the majesty of your face rises up from the centerpiece of your icy torso. Dusted with soot, 
the fortress of glaciers embellishing your sex slice tenderness intersections between the unyielding muscles of your abdomen with their murderous peaks concerns stay fixated on this image of statuesque beauty and what I must do to prevent it from becoming defaced by the constant upsurge of filth surrounding us. I'm reduced to nothing without you. Ever since I saw you, I realize that now you'll be all I've ever had have to go on. But oh, what monumental strength you've endowed me with. You are a vision of pure energy Light as a feather, but as traded as the rays of the sun through a refracted lens. I'm an omnipotent, but as adroit and impenetrable as uh, the air itself. I embrace your stare when I close my eyes. And your power spurns me through the drudgery of my day like a cattle prod. My memory of you serves as a lighthouse that's been surgically implanted in place of where my broken spine used to be. Knowing that you are out there somewhere is such a relief to me. You dance with the planets even when you're simply sitting in a chair and reading or waiting at a bus stop. With spinning lights, you orbit us all, whether we're dreaming or awake.